TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. This is Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Life. I'm Ann Harder, and it is a joy for me to introduce you to Royce Montgomery. He is a, a pastor, mm-hmm. has been for 26 years in Central Texas. But your background, Royce, is as an entertainer, and that's really how we met. That's right. Oh, is doing shows. Most definitely. And it's always such a joy to hear you sing, and you have such a variety of, of styles that you can sing, but I just love to hear you sing Motown. Oh, yeah, I love the Motown. <laughs> the My Girl and this. Uh, Motown was a great era. I love that music. Wasn't it? Wasn't mm-hmm. it? Well, you have a wonderful show that is going to be November 12th and uh, at the Lee Lockwood Museum, which is a, a great venue. Oh, yeah. That's uh, where the uh, Stars Over Texas Jamboree mm-hmm. uh, perform. And I know we've, we've done oh, shows yes, together. Yes. Uh, with them. Uh, but this is your very own Royce Montgomery Presents. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So tell me about the show. Okay. Well, the Lee Lockwood Library Museum is doing a fundraiser this year. So they say, Royce, won't you join in with us? So my church, along with them, we're doing a fundraiser. And what we're doing is we put together a family-friendly show, which includes two comedians. And uh, we have several genres of music, country, soul, jazz, Motown, rock, gospel and so we've got something for everybody and i think they'll be excited about it well you know and all the shows that i have been involved with that you do and we've done many christmas shows oh yes yes. um that's sort of been a hallmark is that there's a great variety that's the thing you know i've I've performed in branson back in the 90s and i saw a lot of the the style the the way they put the shows together Mm -hmm. and it was something for everybody and i said if i ever go back to waco and put a show that's what i want because everybody left pleased. You know, some of the shows had a little bit of country, had just a little bit of rock, and some of them had that Motown show before I left. And I was like, oh, man, those guys look like the Temptations. <laughs> and so I would get the Waco, we're going to make that happen. So that's what we've been doing for the last few years. Yes, you certainly have. And so I, I do want to talk to you more about your um, wonderful career that you've had in professional music uh you mentioned branson missouri Mm -hmm. which is the home to just theater after theater after theater and and so this was in the 90s when you were there what what got you there in the first place was this something you always had wanted to do i had always dreamed of doing this uh during that time high five was out for waco Uh and i said everybody hey i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that you know and folks say oh you can't do it in waco and I kept telling everybody, yes, I know I'm a preacher, I'm pastoring, but I have a passion for bringing people together with love music. Right. So I decided one night, this is strange, I'd taken a shower, got in the bed, and I got up. My wife said, well, what's wrong? I said, I've got to go to J.T. McCoy now. And I went there, and when I went there, this particular person was in the audience. I didn't realize he was there. And so they said, what are you going to sing? Can't touch this? What are you going to sing, Motown? I said, no. I sung a Sinatra uh, all the way. And when I sung it, I mean, it was like, plates and everything people stop eating they they start looking and this lady came over said my boss likes the way you sing here's my card give me a call matter of fact give me your phone number and that's when they had them big old cell phones oh yeah (laughs) so she gave me her number like a brick (laughs) yeah when i got to um, my job on monday and this was like maybe a friday well i gave my work number as well when i got there said somebody called you like 13 times royce you really need to return the call so when i turned it and i went there on sanger street i met the guy that uh, was my manager, and Brian Pardo, mm-hmm. and uh, he said, I want you to quit your job. I want you to sign a contract with me. You go into Branson. Really? And this I was something you see on TV. I've never heard this story before. So something just told you, I need to go. And It was a God thing. Uh, and, and, and And the thing about it was that when it happened, you know, and when he was saying, I want you to sign a contract, the people in the back of him were like, 
Like he's legitimate. He's legitimate because, yeah. you know, I didn't know him. He didn't know me. Right. But he was like, man, you have it. And so I didn't know he put me to a test. You heard of Jonesboro, Texas, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody in Jonesboro look like me. Well, <laughs> you know that, right? Not too, not too oh, many. Oh, yeah. So, we, did, so, we did stories about Jonesboro. So, so what happened yeah. was he said, I'm doing a, a, a concert there. <laughs> Royce, will you come? I've rented a bus and everything. And he said, I've got Jessica Dominguez is going to be the opening act. But will you come and bring your mom? Because he heard my mom sing as oh, well. Oh, good. And so he said, we went there and I started singing. A lot of cowboys and everybody there. And so they came up and said, boy, we like that Motown, man. Oh, we love that. We love that. I didn't know he had flown some people from some theaters in Branson down to Jonesboro to check me out. Get out. And they gave him the, yeah, he'll be okay. And that was it. I couldn't believe it. it it's story. like something you see on TV. I, honestly. I mean, and I've known you a number of years. I have never heard that story before. I am so I'm so glad to hear that. Well, in fact, I'll go ahead and, and explain some of your, really your professional history I was not aware of. I mean, I just know you mm-hmm. as a great singer and a pastor, and we've known each have been friends for a long time mm-hmm. uh, here in Waco, but I really didn't know uh, about your appearances in Branson and, mm-hmm. and so forth. And um, you recently uh, were a part of a program for the Brazos Forum. Oh, and Nancy wow. Moore was sitting right there and was telling me about the, the Brazos Forum. And um, and I was reading the brochure. I went, Royce did all this. <laughs> okay, so, so let me tell you, I have t- took some notes. You're a regular cast member of the Ozark Jubilee Theater, yes. which I've been there and did a story mm-hmm. on that many years ago. Made guest appearances at the Bob Nichols Theater, Charlie Pride Charlie Theater. Charlie Pride. Yeah. Uh, performed with Barbara Fairchild, gospel show, open for the Bobby Blue Band, yeah. Blackwood Quartet. Blackwood Quartet, right here in Waco when he came. I know. And they remember me from Branson. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, th- this, was, this was cool. Okay, so how long were you there? was your Branson my contract was for one year uh-huh. I went back for a half of year and I was doing my own freelance and that's how somebody said Royce you know what you need to do your own show because what we is we had um we had a vacancy on a Sunday evening and they said Royce were you a pastor in Waco won't you bring some gospel and matter of fact just we just turn it over to you so I said okay so I got the Osmond brothers I got some of these big name people to come be a part of my show did you really yes and they all came and I'm like man I'm sitting right by you i should watch you on tv this and we're watching you on stage and that was jay osmond alan osmond oh yeah and uh it was so cool to be able to see people you saw on tv when you were a kid yeah. and now you're looking right at them there was a person named chi shai Zhao's. i never heard of but she was miss um america or something back in the 50s or 60s or whatever it was uh-huh. but she was there she did some stuff with bob hope um a lot of people came royce we want to be a part of it and so what we did we raised money for taney county because I didn't realize that even though Branson get a lot of people coming, mm-hmm. they said it was one of the poorest counties. So we raised money. We gave food oh. away. And all of the people from various theaters came over to the Ozark Jubilee Theater. And I put the show together. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> that, what a great story. What a great story. Well, I know you have a, you know, a lot of fabulous memories from from performing there. Yes. Um, are there any particular songs or, or something that really sticks in your mind of a, of a show that you did? That's Life. We uh-huh. did That's Life and oh, we did Georgia. Song. And before oh, I could yeah. even get started, Georgia, they'd all be clapping. I don't <laughs> they, care if they were from Texas, they'd be clapping they'd Georgia. Go, I know that tune. <laughs> I, yeah, they, they'd hear the opening notes and say, yeah, I, that yeah, was... I can name that tune. Well, um, well, yeah, there's so so many great songs that I've heard you I've heard you perform, uh, but the the show that is uh, set for November twelfth mm-hmm. uh, is going to be a family friendly show. Oh yes, most definitely for sure. Tell tell me about that. I mean, you've even got some children in the cast. Yeah, we've got some children. Gonna I mean, be your, your grandson, grandsons, and some of the kids drums. at the church. Yeah. Oh wow, my grandson, he's been playing since he was play. one and a half I, years old. Now you remember that, I right? I remember <laughs> seeing him. And now here, I he's, he's 10 a years old now. He drummer, is a huh? great drummer. Yeah, he's excited and he's dedicated too. Uh, he went to Austin to visit my younger daughter uh-huh. and it was a Sunday. And so he called his grandmother in Austin and said, hey, I go to church on Sundays. He said, come pick me up. And he went and played at their church. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he, most kids would have sat out and said, well, hey, I'm not at Papa's church. I'll just go to Austin and left. He said, no, come pick me up. I play on Sundays. I play on Sundays. Yes. He's that dedicated he's dedicated to, to yeah. a his his gift that he is oh, not yeah, going to hide it under a Oh, he's not going to hide it. Right? And he's excited this time because, you know, most time I'll let him kind of sit in with older drummers. Yeah. And he said, Papa, when am I going to get a chance to do it myself? So this time he's going to do 
ninety nine percent himself. We really? have we have one uh, person that's going to be a guest drummer, and that's going to be uh, Kenny Gardell. Okay. He, he's going to come play the drums, and I told him I want to team him up with um, Jim Chase. Okay, <laughs> so good, that's good. that's the only song he won't play on. Well, you mentioned Jim Chase, and he's another musician I've known a long time. Of course, I knew him really originally as a mm-hmm. broadcaster. Of course, he was uh, an anchor at Channel Six a long time I ago. Know that. Yeah, and uh, wow. anyway, Jim is is a great. A guitarist, and I've heard him play guitar, but I did not know till I saw a Facebook Live you did with him recently mm-hmm. that that he's going to sing. Oh yeah, he's going to be singing. <laughs> and my brother John, you know, he always does the Prince. I said we're not going to do the Purple Rain this time, right. but he's going to do Ray Charles, and he's going to do uh, Chuck Berry. Oh, and fun. so you be looking out for that Duck Walk. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> he go do the duck walk. Yeah, oh, so that's gonna be it, exciting. It, it is. It's gonna be so much fun. And um, not only uh, do you have uh, you know great music planned uh, and a variety of music, mm-hmm. but also some comedians. Oh yeah, we have Doctor Harrison from Baylor. He's going. He's also the pastor of the First Baptist Church there on Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a great comedian as well. He uses PowerPoint, but this time he's going to do some stand up. Yeah. Then we have Byron Sugar. A. Armstrong, which I didn't even know that he's retired military, he speaks about two or three different languages. You know, he has yeah. everybody laughing all the time. He's going to be there as well. And then uh, what I'm excited about is I went to the Texas Music Cafe or whatever it is, not far from yes, here. Right, right, and uh, right. I met a guy by the name of Colton Benton. Oh, wow. He's going to do some Garth Brooks. This guy was a great hidden secret, but the secret will be out on the 12th. <laughs> this guy is good. He's good. And and he does a song that um, relates to family and uh, uh, telling your family that you love them before it's too late. Yeah. And so he did this at our rehearsal. Some of the girls were crying. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said, don't wait too late. He lost his uh, grandmother, I think a relationship he had that that went sour after eight years, and f- everything just he was just down. And God gave him this song, "Don't Wait Too Late," you know, yeah. to tell him that you love him. Do it now. And the song is like, "When it was the last time." Oh God, that that, that that's going to be the showstopper right It'll there. Really move people. Yes, well, yes. And, and so you've got original music. You've got you know great favorites. Mm-hmm. And I got Day Trey, you know, Day Trey, he's going to be doing, oh, we're, we're adding some Nat King Cole. I always do Nat King Cole, oh, but yeah. we found out that Day Trey, he has it down. He's a little bit older than me. He has that whole flavor. So he's going to be doing the song Love. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then we're doing a tribute to those who have experienced um, breast cancer. Mm-hmm. And we'll have our pink and stuff. Some people have pink on, but we're doing the Minnie Ripton song, Loving You. Oh. And so <laughs> Linda Crawford from the Anchor newspaper. Uh huh. Oh wow. Her and um, Jim Chase are gonna do that. He's gonna oh, play guitar, oh, and good. she's gonna do it. Wow. <laughs> well, so I so 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 bring your Tisha to cry <laughs> one minute, and then you know you bring your dancing shoes to dance the next minute. Oh, but yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna have you up and down. It's, it's gonna be good. Well, it's gonna touch your good. emotions. And, and the Lee Lockwood Theater has got a nice space in the oh, front yes, that if you yes. want to dance. So you're you're saying yeah, feel free. Yes, to yes, move yes. Your feet. And the food's gonna be great too. We're having it catered, mm-hmm. and that's gonna be from five forty five until six forty five. Those are forty dollar tickets. Forty dollar tickets, but you're gonna have a lot of great food. It's yeah. gonna be great, and yeah. be able to uh, meet the cast, Meet the cast take pictures them. and we have great vendors too while we we're uh talking a while ago and that phone call came at somebody from marlin with the ass is it too late if they can bring their products oh, good. and so they're gonna have a big uh booklet of uh tickets of booklets of different uh savings mm-hmm. coupons and so we have um paparazzi the jewelry we have somebody's gonna bring a clothing store is coming so hey it's a lot of people are latching on saying hey we want to be a part of this <laughs> <laughs> the radio stations are, are, oh, are coming oh, on. We're going to give away some tickets. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, some of the TV stations are, are getting the word out. So we're excited about it. Yeah. Well, this really, it's going to be a great show. I, I know there are people that came to, to the last show that I was a part of that had never heard of you before. And some, it was kind of a chance meeting I yep, think they yep. had with you and came and just were wowed. Oh, and yes. I, I know they won't be missing. But you remember, Ann, when we, um, some of the people that came to that show, we wind up going to Gatesville. Yeah. And you did, uh, was it Doris Day? Who did you do? You did? Yes, I, that was my, <laughs> when I had the, my Doris Day. <laughs> yeah, week. yeah. Yeah, right. And then you remember you did uh, Love, Love Will Keep Us Together. Yeah, right. And one of the Cap, shows. We did old Captain and Hey, so and I've been excited and I've been honored to have you be a part of the show as well because she oh, brings so life. She transforms from Ann into like <laughs> these other stars that we've well, seen. Well, Carol King. I've done yeah, that's Carol right. King. Oh, that's yeah. the one I like. I 
top here, the earth. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, you, that's always like, you always <laughs> like that one. Um, do you have a Christmas show coming up? Are you thinking this about This year, what we've done, there's a place, the multi-purpose building there in East Waco. Right. Uh, I did a soulful Christmas about four years ago, and that neighborhood association got in with me mm-hmm. and they said Roy say if we'll go ahead and, and sponsor that again will you bring some music put it together so December the 17th okay. I'm going to go over it won't be my show but I'm going to try to solicit other people kids adults seniors that have talent have like this big citywide talent show be and great. we'll have food and free food won't charge for anything and just bring everybody together because they want to do something on the east side and so I said hey I'll go to whatever side of town we're just going <laughs> to bring everybody together yeah, yeah. oh well that, that's, that's wonderful and yeah. that's December 17th yeah, that another one to mark your calendar for, for sure. Uh, well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more with Royce and get to know him even a little bit better. Stay with us. Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine Wine and vinyl. vinyl. So check us out on RogueMediaNetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. <laughs> frozen, frozen heroes. Gonna tell you about frozen, frozen heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything. And, and basically, I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> frozen, frozen heroes. Gonna tell you about frozen, frozen heroes. Gonna tell you about. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story.
And I am back with Royce Montgomery. And you know, we've been talking about your career that you had in in Branson. And I and I mentioned one of the shows that you did was at the Charlie Pride Theater. Uh-huh. Uh, what a great talent! Oh, he was good. You know, he, he was. was and uh, and so so tell you you've got a story to tell about that. Well, the funny thing about it when I went to Branson, Missouri, everybody assumed that I was Charlie Pride's son, and I would go to Dick's Five and Dime, which you buy all type of products and stuff there. And I said, No, I'm not Charlie's son. You know, I really like his music. Oh, sure, you're his son. So I went to a restaurant one time. They said, hey, the dinner's on me. He said, tell, tell your dad. I said, hello. I said, who? They said, Charlie. I said, he, he, he's, he's not my dad. So I went back to the restaurant. It was McClintock's, real uh-huh. fancy restaurant, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. So when I went there and I looked at my bill, and, and so I said, uh, they said, well, well, tell your dad hello. I said, I sure will. <laughs> I said, yeah, this bill. Oh, yeah, that's my dad now. <laughs> De- definitely. I'm, I'm his adopted son. I'll tell son, dad hello. Tell yeah. dad hello. <laughs> and bring yeah. him back next time. Oh, show. yeah. Oh, man, that's that's funny. Well, of course, you, you've just had such a, a marvelous career uh, and met so many people. And, and as you were telling me earlier, you know, this is it, it was not something you even saw on the radar for yourself. I did. I just couldn't figure out how it was going to be done. People said in Waco, you can't get discovered. You can't do anything. So I would go to Dallas, various places, and uh, I got a chance to get on stage with Patti LaBelle, and that was one of the highlights. I oh, enjoyed really? that. Yeah. yeah. I got maybe about 30 seconds, but hey, it's better than nothing. <laughs> well, tell me about that. Where- well, we were at the amphitheater in um, Dallas. Uh-huh. And so what happened, there's a part of her show where she invites 10 guys oh. to come on the show and just come on stage. So I'm like at the last seat way at the top. <laughs> and the and, and I said, I'm going down there. And they said, no, those are $200 ticket seats down there. You know where you're going? I said, yes, I'm going. And I could hear, I could do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I got to get on stage with <laughs> Patty LaBelle. So I went in, I went down, I made my way down the first flight, second flight, went all the way down to the stage. That's where they had the tables and everything. So the guy at at the front of the, uh, the uh, door, he said, you don't have a ticket again. I said, man, I got to get on that stage and thank God for this pretty girl that passed by. I said, you talk to her and let me get on through. So he let me slide on through and he started talking to her. I said, praise <laughs> Lord. So now I'm at the gate. I'm right there at the front of the stage and she called the eighth guy, ninth guy. She said, you, I said, me, she, yeah, get on stage. I'm like, so I'm up close and I'm on stage and I'm like, oh, so I said, say something. So all I could do is, oh, 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 oh. I did it with the music. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my wife said, the people that were sitting with her said, that's your husband. He made it. He made it. <laughs> so when I came back up, when I got up there, she's wondering what all the clapping was about. They was like, he made it. He made it. <laughs> Way at the top. <laughs> so that was exciting. Then I got a chance to meet her again. And her her, uh, perfume came out Uh in Dallas and went to the mall. So I said, I'm the one got on stage. She said, yeah, they all start clapping. She remembered She remembered me. And I showed her pictures when I was in Branson, showed her mom. She said, who's this beautiful lady? And I said, it's my mom. So we got to talk. And everybody said, you know Patty. I said, I do now because we talked like 10 minutes. Her brother was like, we got to get everybody else through. Got to sell your perfume because we just got locked in talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was cool. It was exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, your your precious mother, though, she, (laughs) she, she can bring the house down. Oh, she she can. She can. She was in Branson one time. I'll tell this real quick. The, on Charlie Pride's stage, there's a little button that you push that lets you go under the stage. And it was the top stage. And then you go ahead and you go like, uh, uh, instead right. of an escalator, you go straight down. Yeah. Okay. So when the show is over, hit the button and you go bye-bye and you don't see them no more. They, they sink into the ground, right. into sure. the basement. Well, what happened, Mama it's started like doing, I, door, yeah, yeah, so Mama started doing I Fly Away. So the band's up, ah, la, 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 playing everything. And Mama gets the spirit and, and she gets to dance dancing around with these high heel shoes on. She's about that close from the button. And everybody says, Lord, don't let her hit the button. She dancing, dancing. Oh. And she's like, Emma, Emma. She's just dancing, dancing, dancing. <laughs> and then we was over with my first year. Said, Emma made it. Emma, if you come that close to that button, you'd have sunk. Oh <laughs> Said, you wouldn't have flown. You wouldn't have flew away. You'd have went down. <laughs> oh. Everybody bust out laughing. It was so funny. <laughs> she said, well, God kept me. And everybody stood up, gave an ovation. Right. It was good. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, you, you were telling me um, earlier about about uh, her rehearsal, that she'd come into rehearsal. And she's, how, how old can you, she, you she She's 80. Is she 80? Mm-hmm. Well, 80 years old. She <clears throat> is doing very well for 80, but she was, Feeling a little bit. Oh, she wasn't feeling bit. good yeah, at all. She, she came cane, in with a cane. She yeah. had fallen. And once we did the gospel music, her song, it's like she popped up. She got oh, in yeah. it. She got to start singing. And everybody's got the rocking and clapping hand. And Jim Chase has his first time. So he got his guitar. He started playing. And yeah, I was like, right, well, it's right. like we were having church. Yeah. He said, who is that? I said, my mom. He said, no. I said, yeah. 
He said, he said, man, she got the spirit. Yeah. She so does. he calls her mama now. <laughs> she's mama. Well, she's mama to just about everybody who knows her. But but this is a family show for you. Oh, yes. You've got definitely. talented children and I have my, my uh, middle daughter, which is Brittany Allen. She's going to be singing. Yeah. And then we have uh, Latoria Borgia Jean. She's going to be singing as well. And uh, matter of fact, she'll be down here to Sunday to rehearse with us to kind of go over and fine tune everything. Right. But uh, we have Sean Anderson. You heard him play it on keyboard. Uh-huh. He's great. And uh, we have JC Cleveland on the bass. And uh, so we just have a, a great group of musicians. Rashad, of course, you know, Rashad on the horn. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, we're excited about it because a lot of times we rehearse something and we'll get there and I'll say, hey, y'all, let's throw this one in. They'd be like, that's not on the list. I said, throw it in. And it works <laughs> out well. So it, it, it's, it's kind of strange the way we work. But hey, God always puts it together. And the whole idea is we want to bring people together, put aside our differences for that one day. Right. Come on and just have some fun. I had to have fun and be entertained yes. and, and blessed. That's right. It's yes. just a little bit of everything. Of course, the uh, Lee Lockwood Museum there on Waco Drive, very mm-hmm. easy parking lot, easy to get in. I mean, it's a wonderful venue for you. And um, it's lit up. It's, That's what I like. It's lit up on the outside, so you don't have to worry about great anything. It's lighting. It's not a huge theater, though. Mm-hmm. And, and about you 350, out. maybe? Right. And, you set, and so folks need to go ahead. And again, how can they get tickets? They can go to the Lee Lockwood Library Museum. Uh, uh, and also they can go to event is it event bright Eventbrite, Eventbrite uh-huh. and uh, they can get the tickets there. But like I said, they're going pretty fast. And so you don't want to miss this show. People are calling now. I've had some tickets that we had discounted that I, we sold 72 tickets in, in one, in two days, yeah, I sold them to the seniors, and so uh, uh, over to Dewey, and they all start calling. Hey, we're having to watch the show, so we're gonna get some tickets. <laughs> so I thank God that we got a good send off, you know. Sure. So we're hoping that we will pack the whole theater. Our goal is to pack the um, the the balcony as well as the floor seats. Yeah, yeah, and and if we do that, I think we we'll all come together. It's it's for a good cause. Yeah. It's their annual fundraiser, and I feel honored that they chose me. Man, they could have chose anybody, but I just thank God they gave me the opportunity. Well, you you can put together an entertaining show, and they they know that at uh, Lee Lockwood again. It's Lee Lockwood presents mm-hmm. Royce Montgomery in concert November twelfth, seven o'clock. But if you want to get your VIP ticket, mm-hmm. you can have a wonderful dinner and uh, enjoy meeting the cast. Uh, earlier in the like five thirty. Mm-hmm. In the, in yeah, five thirty, and we'll start serving by five forty-five. Good thing about it is, is that the house will not open, and the theater part won't open for the public that's not VIP uh-huh. until all VIP people have been seated. Okay, and so um, that's going to be the first four rows. So I it's think not all the way across. Seating, no, it's not reserved thing, except for the, your VIP. Mm-hmm. No. Just the VIP. So what happens? You know where the library part is at. Uh-huh. So we have the celebration in there. They'll be escorted from that room into the theater, and then we'll open up the main doors. Yes. And so that way you can kind of choose if you want to sit here, or there, whatever. You kind of get an option without having to just take what's left. Right. Right. Wonderful. And balcony seats are great too. That theater is good. Oh, Either yeah. way you go, and it's they're only twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. So, I mean, it's a it's a great a great mm-hmm. entertainment buy for folks. Oh, well, yeah. Well, Royce, I like to end these visits with a little questionnaire. It's similar okay. to one the late great James Lipton used on Inside the Actor's Studio, and this is my Ooh. take on it. What is your favorite word? Love. Yep. Love. Yep. Uh, what is your least favorite word? Hey. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Just being able to take something that someone else thinks is nothing and show that it can be polished up and that it can be brought to its highest level. Yeah. I mean, I like to take antiques, polish them up. You know, fix them up. You know, I love cars. I know you love and, cars. And I buy cars that people feel that like, oh, that's nothing. That I first met you. I, your brother. <laughs> I think so. Your brother. My, my yes. late, late brother, Ed. Oh, that he, was my friend, he and his wife. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is how we first, you were and, you were detailing cars. And you remember your your uh, mom, uh, she had a Lincoln and mom had a Lincoln at the same time. And they were really particular about that Lincoln. Oh, yeah. Her mom and mine. <laughs> and so uh, I said, I'd sure like to detail that. So she said, I'm real particular about my car. So when I did, he said, you did a good job. She, and so yeah. your brother said, mom liked the way you did it. So I was like, all right. You got, you got kudos for, for your job on that Lincoln. <laughs> she loved that Lincoln. That's great. Well, now, yeah. now it comes back to me how we, how we first met. Um, what turns you off creatively, 
spiritually or emotionally? Well, whenever I'm saying, okay, and it, you know, I told, I told my um, wife, I said, I think a long time ago, I might've been ADDDDHD <laughs> because in school I could never, you know, I could yeah. never just focus. But my principal, Mr. Habern said to my mom, your son Royce is going to be an entertainer or a preacher. And guess what? I became both. He's because Royce, he does his work. He just wants to make everybody laugh. He wants to make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. And my thing is when I see people that put other people down, and they don't even have a reason just doing it just because somebody else said Some, that yeah. that bothers me. Or if they say, well, and if you and I said, OK, Ann and Royce, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this work. This is an old building, but we're going to fix it up. And somebody said, oh, that can't be done. We tried it before that. That bothers me because it shows that they don't have any hope in their life. They don't have any faith in their life. And it, that 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 just really bothers me, you know. And then when I try to win them to say, well, it can be done. Then I feel like now I got to prove to them it's got to be done. <laughs> so then when I prove and they say, I. I never knew that. I said, that's what I was trying to tell you. It could be yeah. done. But you, you know? rely on a higher power. To get As, oh, done. most definitely. Yes. I trust in God with everything I have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, what sound do you love the most? That might be kind of a funny question. Uh, what sound? Well, when I'm listening to music, I like the treble. I like a lot of treble. A lot uh-huh. of people like a lot of bass, bass yeah. but I like a lot of treble because a lot of people don't know. I don't hear in my right ear. And oh, that's why if you'll that. notice, I turn a lot to the left. I did not And know my that. uncle, I, he figured it out. I said, you don't hear in your right ear. I said, he said, I know, Sirach, when you talk, you do this. And sometimes you get confused in what people are saying because two yeah. people talk at the same time. It kind of makes it messed up. Right. So my ear likes to hear a lot of treble because it's already hearing too much bass. I could be sleeping. I can hear something at the window or whatever, your bird or whatever. How'd you hear that? So I'm hearing stuff that other people don't hear. So now I see how Stevie Wonder feels with his eyes. Uh I'm hearing stuff that other people won't even hear. And so when God takes one thing away, he gives you something else. Yeah, Yeah, he does. What what is your least favorite sound? Least favorite? Lorraine's going to get mad. (laughs) Snoring. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to death to us part, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling stories now. <laughs> well, what other profession would you like to have tried? Well, I always loved driving, and my uh, dad was a truck driver. Really? And then I had, I wanted military. I wanted to go to military because of my ear. I couldn't go. Couldn't, so yeah. I wanted to do truck driving, yeah. old road driving. Because really? I love just driving and putting on a CD or back then a, a eight track or either a cassette, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and just listening and driving and just seeing the country, just seeing God's creation, the trees, the, you know, the various things that you see, yeah. the grass, the birds, you know, even the roadkill, you know? yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. whatever, just seeing whatever is it's a beautiful thing. Well, what job do you know you would not want to do? Uh, I don't think I ever want to lay in semen anymore. I, I took a job at 15 years old uh, being a cement layer. Oh, really? And it, it was kind of hot out there. And matter of fact, the um, the bank over there off of Bosque, we laid the cement for that one mm-hmm. construction back in the what 80s or whatever. But it was just, I was bored because, you know, it'd be, the sun would be out and all of a sudden it'd be raining. And we had to sit there and wait and do nothing. Right. And then we'd have to go back. I like to kind of keep a steady pace. Yeah. And you never know when you're going to work. You know, yeah. at, at that time, I'm thinking back in the 80s when I was a teenager. Now, mm-hmm. maybe been different when I was grown and had to make a living, but that got boring for me. Yeah. I yeah. like the money, though, every week. I but it, it, it was just that work. it just, you know, that I, you're always grateful that they, there's somebody who wants to do that. Yeah, right? but I just didn't have the, I didn't have the patience. I was yeah. wanting to hurry up and 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 go home. <laughs> and of right. course, I was 15, though. So, OK, well, finally, speaking of going home, what do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well done. You've used every tool I've given you, regardless of who said you shouldn't. You did it the way I told you to do it. Wow. You have done things well. <laughs> Royce, I appreciate so much I your appreciate time you being as with well. us here on Central Texas Life. Again, uh, your show is November 12th. That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday. In evening, Waco. In Waco at Lee Lockwood a Library and Museum. Thanks mm-hmm. again, Royce. Thank you, Ann. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder.